In photoluminescence, there are two type of measurements. The first one is called steady state photoluminescence and the second one is called time result photoluminescence. The steady state photoluminescence measurements looks like this one. Here on the y axis we have intensity and the x axis we have the wavelength here. And the peaks looks like this one. These are basically three different materials. The time result photoluminescence looks like this one here. And the y axis we have normalized intensity and the x axis we have the time in nanoseconds. But in this video, I will only talk about the steady state photoluminescence. So let's discuss what is steady state photoluminescence. If you do not know about photoluminescence, what is photoluminescence and how photoluminescence works. So please watch my video. I will also talk about that what observations we get from steady state photoluminescence like the peak shape in wavelength, like the quenching, I will talk briefly about these characteristics. Like the peak shift here, we can see here this blue peak is basically shifted uh, toward the uh, higher wavelength or lower energy. We will also talk about briefly uh, why there is a peak shift. So in steady state photoluminescent measurements, the sample is basically excited, the sample is bombarded by a constant and continuous beam of photon. This means that we have a sample here and the photon are basically striking the sample continuously. Continuously, there is a continuous bombardment of photon on the samples and then we get emission spectrum because we know that in organic molecule or inorganic molecule how the mechanism works. So you can watch my video here. So we get fluorescence are basically the emission of spectrum and then the graph we get basically it is the intensity on the y axis and the wavelength is basically on the x axis and this is the graph of the uh, steady state photoluminescence. If you look into the PL uh, graph basically, so we basically we de detecting the, the emitted photon and this is basically we call uh, fluorescence and these emitted photons are basically we call intensity because if we get more photons, so we will have higher intensity. If we get less photons, we will get less intensity. And that intensity is basically the function of the wavelength here. Uh, moreover, the excitation wavelength is fixed here. This is the most important point here, that the excitation wavelength is fixed here. This means that if we want to excite our sample on 533 nanometer, so this will be fixed here. The photon bombardment will be continuous, but the excitation wavelength will be fixed here while the emission wavelength, we can also see from the graph, the emission wavelength is not fixed here. It's changing uh, because when we see that it's changing with the intensity. For example, this is a profile here. So these are the emission wavelengths here. So there are many wavelengths here. You see here, so there are many wavelengths. So this is another uh, important point that the excitation wavelength is basically fixed here. Uh, it basically reveals that how the emitted photon intensity where is with the wavelength? What information we get from the steady state photoluminescence here? So the first important thing is basically the peak shape. Shape is basically mean this is the peak shape here and this is another peak shape here. So the peak shape and wavelength here, these are very, very important parameter. It basically gives us the detailed information about the molecule or the, or the sample electronic energy levels. From here, from the shapes, we can uh, guess the electronic levels of the samples. Another important parameter is basically the quenching. Quenching is very, very important parameter in photoluminescence. Quenching basically, I will make separate video on this. Quenching is basically mean the decrease in intensity here. So this means that if I compare this black one with the red one, so this means that the red one has more quenching power. Quenching basically means that extraction, extraction of electron or in other words, Quenching basically mean reducing the recombination because we get this fluorescence when electron basically recombine with the hole here. So this means that if we have more number of electrons combining with the holes, we will get higher intensity. This means that the quenching is less. But if we reduce this recombination, this means that we will have less intensity. This means that the, the excited electrons now moving uh, and taking part in conduction or something. So far photovoltaics and some other uh, applications we need electrons to be uh, utilized so in that case we need we need less recombination so this quenching is very very important it basically referring to the decrease in intensity in the plp that this is very awesome question in research yet on other platforms 
So quenching basically means uh, decrease in the intensity. This means that the blue one is uh, have a very, very uh, large quenching. This means that the intensity decreased significantly for this blue line, for the blue sample. This means that the quenching power is higher. Or in other words, here we have a uh, high collection of electrons. High collection of electrons are, we can say that less recombination of electron here. As you see here, this basically means that uh, it recombination decreases or indicating how powerful electrons are extracted. So this means that it shows the transport capability or it shows the crystallinity of the material. Now the third important parameter is basically the peak shift here. We can see that this peak is basically shifting toward the right here. This means toward the longer wavelength, toward the greater wavelength or toward the lesser energy here. This simply means that we can also guess that if the material is basically the peak is basically shifting toward the longer wavelength, so this means lower energy. This you can say that the band gap is decreasing or uh, uh, increasing vice versa. This is here the blue shape here. This means that the quenching power of this red is high, but the, there is a shift in this blue line. So this shift basically is very, very important here. Uh, it, it shows that the longer wavelength or uh, lower wavelength in both cases. So it's talk about the trap states. These are very, very important. I mean the defects within the material because this way, uh, if we reduce the trap states or the uh, defects, so we can improve the crystallinity or we can also reduce the grain boundaries in the material. So this peak shift is also very, very important. Now to summarize, in photoluminescence, steady state photoluminescence, we, 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 we see three parameters basically. How the peak shapes looks like, what is the peak shape and what is the uh, wavelength here, the emission wavelength here. Another important parameter is basically the quenching, how the intensity decreases uh, of the uh, fluorescence. The third important parameter is basically the peak shape. So these three are very, very important parameters when you want to interpret the steady state uh, photo, uh, steady state photoluminescence. photoluminescence. Thanks for watching. If you have any question, any doubt, so please do comment and please support my channel, subscribe, like and share my videos.